Hi, I'm Tim Tyler, and this is a review of this book, Cultural Evolution by Alex Masudi. And there's the back and the spine. So, this is a great book about the important topic of cultural evolution. Alex Masudi is an experimental psychologist working in the field, and he's previously published numerous papers and a PhD thesis on this topic. His book lays out the case for a Darwinian theory of cultural evolution in plain language in a manner which should be comprehensible to a wide audience. The preface states his aim with the book, which he says is to nudge the social sciences along a little, and he does this by illustrating the progress that has been made in explaining culture scientifically using Darwinian evolutionary theory. The book is divided up into introductory material, microevolution, macroevolution, experimental work, field work, evolutionary economics, culture in non-human animals, and a chapter about the coming evolutionary synthesis for the social sciences. The writing is dense, clear and polished. The first three chapters are great, so it's best to start at the beginning. Much of the second half of the book consists of summarising literature in the field, which Masudi does pretty well. The book does a good job of making its case. Most readers will probably come away convinced that the vast majority of Masudi's ideas on the topic are correct. The book has several themes. One is that cultural evolution is Darwinian. Another is that cultural evolution is not neo-Darwinian. That's true, but it probably also goes for organic evolution as well. Masudi proposes that we need a Darwinian synthesis for the social sciences, mirroring the Darwinian synthesis that took place in the natural sciences in the 1930s and the 1940s. And that's true, we do need something a lot like that. At this stage, it's time for some of my objections. The neo-Darwinian synthesis that took place in the natural sciences left out symbiosis. The cultural Darwinian synthesis that Masudi proposes also apparently leaves out symbiosis. Masudi's whole book has no mention of mutualism, parasitism, epidemiology or immunology in a cultural context, and this is surely a big mistake. Cultural evolution is dominated by the phenomenon of symbiosis. The models on which the modern strains of cultural evolution are based were originally drawn from epidemiology. Mirroring the situation in the 1940s, we do have a pioneering theory of cultural symbiosis, due partly to a cloak from 1975, and which was populated by Dawkins in 1976. However, Masudi dismisses this work as being a fad. Back in the 1940s, the new Darwinian synthesis had an excuse for leaving out symbiosis, because at the time it was still very poorly understood. Now, symbiosis is still relatively poorly understood, but we know at least enough about it to know that we can't leave it out. On a possibly related point, Masudi's account of culture is incredibly positive. Masudi gives an argument for culture being adaptive and barely mentions any other possibility. After a while, I was on the lookout for any mentions at all of cultural traits that were deleterious to their hosts. In the whole book, I found celibate priests, the small family size norm, and suicide bombers. So, some deleterious cultural traits are mentioned, but that's an astoundingly short list for a 264-page book on this topic. Perhaps Masudi's lack of treatment of cultural parasitology and immunology arises partly from an underappreciation of the significance of deleterious cultural traits. As the obesity and smoking epidemics illustrate, deleterious cultural traits are actually commonplace. Culture is not always there to help its hosts. Sometimes it acts to manipulate and sabotage them for the benefit of others. Addictions caused by drugs, pornography and chocolate gateau typically don't benefit their hosts, but rather benefit the CEOs of companies that push those sorts of product. Organisms need a cultural immune system to help them weed out these harmful cultural traits. And from my perspective, missing out so much of the negative side of culture results in an unbalanced and incomplete treatment. While Masudi's call for a Darwinian synthesis for the social sciences is to be endorsed, the social sciences have repelled biologically inspired invasions before on multiple occasions. They are well adapted to an ecosystem consisting of regular attempted raids from biologically inspired theorists. And one of the contributions to these failures was that the biology being used was wrong. While obviously too much further delay would be undesirable, we should try and make the science as good as we reasonably can this time around, or at least give it our best shot. A crippled, symbiosis-free version of Darwinism would only bring the social sciences up to the biology of the 1940s anyway, and we should be able to manage to do better than that. Another complaint is that Masudi slams the concept of evolutionary progress, 
pointing to unilinear progress theories that inspired social Darwinism and claiming that evolution is a ladder and not a bush. However, progress in organic and cultural evolution is just too obvious to deny. Attempts to deny it appear to stem mainly from the notion of political correctness, and the idea has been promoted in modern times primarily by the Marxism-inspired theorist Stephen Jay Gould. I think that the political subtext in this case is similar to the one in Gould's farcical book about intelligence testing, to promote equality by making sure that all people and societies are equally evolved. Instead of such nonsense, evolution is better viewed as a giant optimization pro process set up to maximize entropy production. As such, it is incredibly directional. It is very strange to hear people denying evolutionary progress in modern times when it is staring us so clearly in the face. I think that scientists should unite in pointing out what nonsense progress denialism really is. Though promoting the role of evolutionary theory, Masudi doesn't really go into game theory, chaos theory, cybernetics, maths, and the recap on the basis, uh, basics of the scientific method that would also be needed to unite the social sciences. However, given his focus in this book, that seems to be excusable. A few less significant criticisms. Masudi criticises Campbell's blind variation with selective retention thesis as being neo-Darwinian for insisting on blind variation. However, this criticism appears to be based on a popular misunderstanding of Campbell's idea. Contrary to what the name might suggest, Campbell did not claim that evolutionary variation was blind. His claim was more like, either variation is blind, or it is based on knowledge previously obtained, in which case there should still be some element of blind variation involved. That idea is quite compatible with many kinds of directive mutation, so the existence of such variation does not contradict Campbell's idea. I'm not claiming that Campbell was right here, just that variation that's biased towards being adaptive is perfectly consistent with his idea. Masudi discusses the controversy over whether cultural inheritance is Lamarckian. He cites those that claim that it is not, but doesn't really explain their arguments, so a reader unfamiliar with this topic can't easily make out the details of the case that Masudi is arguing against. A common criticism of the claim that cultural inheritance is Lamarckian is that similar arguments usually also classify dogs passing on acquired fleas to their offspring as being Lamarckian inheritance, and that's contrary to common usage of the term Lamarckian inheritance in biology. Masudi's examples of innovation appear to be vulnerable to this objection, and it's a pretty fatal one, so these examples seem to be being wasted. Masudi correctly says that Lamarckian inheritance depends on the genotype-phenotype split, and he then gives an internalist statement of that split, which places the cultural genotype in human brains and the cultural phenotype in behaviour and artefacts. Externalists probably won't find an argument based on this, these premises very convincing. What would be more convincing is the existence of a non-trivial developmental process. For example, if a cake was being baked, then there would be no doubt about where the phenotype-genotype split was intended to be put. However, Masudi doesn't give such an example, leaving the location of the cultural phenotype merely assumed, and so fails to make much of a case for Lamarckian inheritance. I don't disagree with Masudi's conclusion, but I think that his supporting argument would only convince other internalists which doesn't seem to be worth very much. And then a few other differences and criticisms. Um, Masudi apparently thinks that non-cumulative cultural change does not qualify as being a form of Darwinian evolution, while surely it does. Masudi offers a rather sympathetic treatment to cultural group selection, whereas I'm more critical. For example, Masudi offers competition between firms as a modern example. However, employees move between firms constantly, carrying genes and culture with them. It's true that there are non-disclosure agreements, but their effect is limited. When firms go bankrupt, their employees do not die, and much of the corporate culture is carried away by them, or else sold as information property assets. While this much gene flow and culture flow is going on between organisations, it would be very difficult to make any kind of group selection model operate successfully. Towards the end of the book, Masudi attempts to explain why humans have cumulative culture while other animals do not. Accepting this premise for the sake of argument, Masudi gives a rather inconclusive analysis that manages to miss out on a number of what I consider to be the main candidate theories. So, to summarise, this is a great book on an important topic. It's a book which I was waiting to read all year. 
I do think that there are some rather glaring omissions, though, as well as some rather uneven coverage of the field's topics. I enjoyed the literature summary, although perhaps a general reader might get a little bogged down by all the details. It's great that we have Masudi working in this field. It badly needs outstanding communicators to help get its message across to the rest of the world. Um, enjoy.